This is what a face would look like using today's computer graphics. And notice, notice um, it, it's a convincing head. I mean, when you look at it, you go, that's a head. Um, there's no question that's human. Um, but, but there's no question also it's computer graphics. And this is basically OpenGL ES 3.0. Okay? You can see if you turn it off, um, you can just see that like his, uh, his skin just kind of looks like plaster or something. It doesn't, doesn't have the right effect. And so that's something that's, you know, it's quite computationally expensive and something that using Tegra K1 is possible on mobile finally. Now change the lighting environment. This isn't, this isn't just lighting, this is image-based lighting. And look how the light is coming, shining through his ears. Yeah, you get some rim lighting off the edge of his head. And let's change the lighting yet again. That's just really stunning. If he was just more attractive, <laughs> I could sit here and look at him all night. Okay, so this this is a, this is a face only a mother or a computer graphics company could love. <laughs> Ira is actually his real name. He's a very good friend, and I apologize for that funny comment. Okay, so. <laughs> Our lighting and tone mapping, um, cinematic effects like um, with like uh, lens flares, bloom. Now show them what global illumination and HDR means. Sure. Can you yeah. do that? Yeah. It, 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 so do you guys know what HDR means? High dynamic range. Your eyes could see much, much larger dynamic range than a computer monitor 16 bits per pixel can render. Okay. And so the the, the way that we solve this problem, the way that we solve this problem, is we render to a much larger dynamic range inside the graphics processor, okay? Then we do essentially a tone map, a histogram of all of the tones in the scene. And we figure out where the tones are and we remap that tone into a smaller color space. And as a result, we retain the, uh, the large distributions of the large contrasts. The deep darks and the bright whites are retained, but we lose we change the, we retone, retone map, remap, if you will, um, the rest of the dynamic range to fit back into that of a computer monitor. Right? Uh, yeah, I mean. Right? Yeah. Not with this many geometry. I mean, this is still rich with, with polygons, but without global illumination, without high dynamic range, this is what your, what your games would look like. And let's turn it back on. It's almost unbearable to watch. Okay, so, so that's um, special effects, but, but um, uh, the, world, the world is not always so peaceful, right? I mean, sometimes there's astronomic events. That's true. <laughs> I mean, you know what? S could happen, right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So uh, we have a pretty cool bullet time effect here where you can sort of pan around and see all the volumetric... Um, you know, explosions, particles, um, debris. Uh, we're using uh, compute shaders to compute um, you know, the, the movement of things and the, the particle effects that happen. And so what's happening here is that Lucas is using the Tegra K1's yeah. 192 parallel cores to do physics processing. This is the same physics processing that supercomputers use for fluid dynamics, for nanomolecular dynamics, particle simulations for astrophysics. It's exactly the same architecture, exactly the same type of program. Now it's running on 192 cores on the Tegra K1.